up until then had been an ordinary day, nothing remarkable at all. Nothing untoward had happened, not even to Davina McCall. As darkness fell across the land, it occurred to me that night that the hour was close at hand for my weekly shop all right. So armed with my shopping list, I drove my old Allegro towards the retail park outside of town. It's the cheapest place to go. I passed the old B&Q, where Lena Zavaroni was reputed to have bought some buckets, for her personal use only. And soon I parked my little car outside the Sainsbury store, and had a wee altercation with a Romanian about not requiring a car wash any more. Above the fluorescent orange sign, I paid no heed at all to the strangely glowing eerie sky hovering above us all. I grabbed a trolley and in I went, my list and coupons gripped, within my cold and clammy hand I purposefully stepped. First port of call was to avoid the rattling tin and sticky badge of the do-gooder in the door, collecting our hard-earned cash. Their cause, I'm sure, was worthy. Nevertheless, I shimmied past them, avoiding their eye, pretending to be on a call to Inverness. Safely passed, I made my way to the discount veg and fruit, whereupon I secured an out-of-date swede and an obscene-looking carrot to boot. Soon I had amassed a feast, and as far as I could see had successfully only committed to spend 77p. Up until this point it hadn't occurred to me that I had not seen another soul in aisles one to three. But as I moved on from produce to the chiller zone, I stopped in my tracks as I heard a muffled groan. I stupidly dismissed it. Oh, what a fool I was! If only I had known what was to come as I stood there by the fishy swaws. Upon reaching the cooked meats stand, I came across a sight which caused me to grip my own brand liver sausage far too, far too tight. Towering above was a monster, seemingly unassailable. Oh, boy, oh, at this point my lawyers have uh, told me to point out that other supermarkets may be available. An arm of baguettes and fingers made of rolls reached out towards me as if to grab my very soul. I looked up to gaze upon its face. Malt loaf made up its hideous heed with eyes made of sultanas, its ears made out of the finest range of buns made out of bananas. Behind this terrible beast were smaller bread-made millions, speaking in strange unknown tongues, voicing their diabolical opinions. I turned on my heel and ran down the preservative line. I looked behind me as I stopped by the jellies, and a chiver went down my spine. Slumped over a trolley, a shopper lay dead. Her self-scan unit still bleeping and flashing its beam across her head. Why? I cried, upset by the waste. She'd missed the buy one, get one free offer for Shibbon's chicken paste. The anger welled within me. I knew not from where these beasties came, but I vowed to this profligate corpse that her death would be avenged and not in vain. In a moment of inspiration, I grabbed her self-scan gun and ran pell-mell towards the display where the ultra batteries hung. In a flash, I had loaded up the unit with the biggest voltages there and turned to my pursuers and their wholemeal horrid stare. I stood my ground as they advanced and raised my improvised weapon. They stopped in their tracks. Them, them terrible brethren. 
I pulled the trigger and unleashed a laser fury directed at the leader, Loaf Monster. And with that, all my fury. He blew apart when the laser struck into a million bits at most, each one flying past, smelling just a little bit of toast. Other shoppers came out of hiding. So having seen my stand, we stood together, blasting away laser scanners in hand. Moments later, the invaders were gone, and crumbs lay all around. Here and there, a twitching scone, crying out a pitiful sound. And so ended the night of the living bread. Oh, it had come to an end. So heed this story and all I've said, and be watchful then, my friends.